Hey everyone, welcome to my library. My name is Melissa and today I have my November wrap up for you. So um, I'm looking at my notes that are like perched up above, but um, I either DNF'd, set aside for now, or actually read seven books. <laughs> so I had two, I had one DNF and one setting aside for now. So I am going to go chronologically for this wrap up. It just makes more sense in my head going that way. So the first book that I read in the month of November was Vampire Academy by Rich Rochelle Mead. I actually really ended up enjoying this book. Um, so this was featured in the first vlog I ever made. <laughs> And I'm super appreciative to anyone who watched that vlog and, and um, enjoyed it. I, I'm just shocked at how well the vlogs are doing. <laughs> um, I just don't think I'm that interesting, but thank you so much for watching anyways. So yeah, so Vampire Academy, I thought I, I, I came in with apprehensions about this book because I knew it was YA and I knew it was an older book. Um, and so I didn't know if it was gonna hold up well but it actually did and the um the whole plot of this book there's two different types of creatures i guess in that go to this school there's the maroi who are considered vampires and then there's the protectors of the maroi who are called dampiers and i know i'm probably saying all of this wrong but um yeah they're protecting the maroi from the strigoi which are like uh off the wall turned evil Maroi beings. So anyway, so um, Rose, the main character of this book, she is protecting and supposed to be da the Dampier for um, her best friend, Lissa, who is a Maroi. I keep saying these terms, but hopefully you guys, you probably have read it, honestly, but I'm just kind of explaining for those who haven't. Um, so anyways, yes, they are at school and it kind of just follows the clicks and the drama and the politicalness of the school. So yeah, it was really interesting. I ended up enjoying the ending and that's what bumped it up to a three and a half stars for me because um, it actually ends super fast paced and the romance between Rose and her um, trainer, who's like older, like it's not an age gap, but like he's not in school. He's supposed to be just training her. Um, yeah, it was really cute. And I, I thought it ended really well. I know this is the first of a series. So if I wanna continue, there's definitely more. Yeah, I enjoyed this book, three and a half stars. I recommend if you're interested. Um, it's just a super campy, fun vampire book. So yeah, I enjoyed. And then let's see, the second book I read was via audio. And it's one of the books that was on my end of year radar reads that I knew I wanted to get to but before the end of the year, if I could try. And it is Pretty Face by Lucy Parker. This is number two in the London Celebrities series. And this book is following a girl and a, like a actress and a director. So the whole plot of this series just in general is it follows London West End theater, um, actors, actresses, directors, that type of thing. And um, anyways, the first book, Act Like It, I keep talking about and hopefully one of you guys picks it up because it was one of my favorites of the year. I just loved it. It's very Pride and Prejudice, Bridget Jones meets London West End. And it's just so fun. And so this one actually, I really liked too. I ended up giving it a four stars. So not five, but um, so it follows Luke, who is a director. And uh, he is trying to direct this um, very well publicized about play. And um, they just lost their main lead. And so he's frantically trying to figure out who to cast for it. And um, he, they end up thinking maybe they should cast, I can't remember the main girl in this book, like what her name is, but um, they end up casting her much to his chagrin, honestly. He's very, uh, he, he doesn't think she's gonna do a good job because she actually comes from the TV side of things as an actress. 
Um, she plays a very slutty um, womanizer, like not womanizer, manizer <laughs> type of character um, in this TV series. And so she actually gets very sexual uh, harassment happening all the time to her and it's really sad. And then one thing I actually found really interesting was um, the thing that he was apprehensive about was the fact that her voice is very, very high. It's very high pitched. And I didn't realize, like, it's something I've never thought about before, but having a super high pitched voice as a woman in the acting community is actually very difficult for them because um, they are just seen as this kind of like highly sexualized person because of it. It's, it's really sad. And this book kind of focuses on that as it being very feminist and pro um, just doing whatever the heck you want to do. And so she ends up getting a voice teacher for it and um, tries to really like show the world that she can um, be this role and show him specifically too. And so then it's their love story, um, kind of an enemies to lover situation. And I really enjoyed it. I really, really liked both characters a lot. Um, I think Luke was a little less likable to me than Richard, the first hero in this series. Just because like he didn't have anything that really warrants him being so rude. I don't know, with, 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 with Richard, the first guy, you could see why he was this way. So that was kind of one thing. Um, and I just didn't love it as much as Act Like It. So that's why it got four stars for me. <laughs> okay, the third book, oh my gosh, guys, I have a new favorite. And this doesn't happen very often for me. <laughs> I have a very so limited selection of favorites that fit on one shelf, not this shelf, but that fit on one shelf. And this book made it into that, that list. And it is Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. I read this this month with Nadia and she's one of my fellow subscribers. And we had such a good time reading this together. Um, the reason why I love this book so much is because it has such a slow burn romance in here that you don't think is actually going to happen <laughs> until the very end. <laughs> like, um, so the, the main plot of this book is it follows Molly and Molly, um, is one of the characters in, in this town, town of Hollingford, and it kind of follows all of the small town um, dynamics and characters within that within that little town. But specifically with Molly, her dad ends up marrying a woman, and the woman has a daughter, and so that's why I think you know that's why it's called Wives and Daughters is because it's the dynamic between her and her new newfound stepmother and her. Um, daughter and uh, the daughter and Molly so the daughter's name is Cynthia and they end up being very very close and all of the men in the town love Cynthia and no and Molly is just overlooked kind of and this the hero is named Roger and uh, he ends up falling for Cynthia as well and Cynthia doesn't really do much to bring it on but she also doesn't do anything to like push it away. So that was like driving me absolutely insane in this book. But um, other than the fact that the romance is really good, the writing in here was amazing. It is so easy to read. If you are looking for the easiest to read classic, so far this is it for me, even more than Pride and Prejudice in my opinion. Um, and so the other cool thing about this book is it ended up being... Um, not fully finished because Elizabeth Gaskell sadly passed away before she was able to write the last two or three chapters of this book. And so um, at towards the end of the book, uh, they note when it, it ended, like when she had finished her writing and then they summed it up for how they believed she wanted the story to end based on um, evidences of like letters and stuff between her and her siblings and um, anyway, so the ending is kind of left at a spot that you somewhat feel is like, oh, oh, this is the ending, but also it wrapped up nicely. Like, yes, those two or three chapters would have been nice to have to just really like full circle everything, 
but I, I actually kind of liked the ending. It was very um, simple. Uh, so anyways, yeah, that was kind of my experience reading this book. I really want someone else to read this if it's been on your TBR for forever, super recommend. I know that there's a TV series that's also very popular via BBC and I plan on picking, or not picking it up, I plan on watching it sometime this month and binging it, um, you know, one of these days when I'm on PTO and I just wanna cuddle up and watch something. So yeah, that's gonna be my plan. So yeah, highly recommend, five stars for sure. <laughs> Okay, so the next book uh, that I attempted to read and I actually DNF'd and I vlogged it if you guys are curious, but um, was Untouchable by Sam Mariano. Um, so yeah, this book was recommended to me via a video that Jen from the Book Refuge made. Um, she made a recommendations video for star-crossed enemies to lovers, which is my favorite trope in romance and love stories. And so... Um, I never really tried a dark romance before and I, I think that was honestly the biggest, that was my mistake because, um, I think I should have started with something very much lighter and, you know, eased my way into it versus just diving headfirst into a crazy dark romance that kind of, um, was one of the most effed up. <laughs> so that was my fault. Um, but yeah, I ended up DNFing after 100 pages because I just really couldn't get, I couldn't grasp the fact that it was a romance yet. I mean, I just, I wasn't really loving the hero. I know that it starts off really rough and so I was fully prepared for that with the first couple chapters starting with an assault scene. But then after that, I was kind of waiting for something to happen for me to feel those feels, for me to feel like, okay, yeah, like we can make a turning point we can turn this thing around and it never really happens. So yeah, I DNF'd that one. But I am gonna try again with one of the recommendations from that video. I think I'm gonna try A Heart of Blood and Ashes by Mila Vane. Um, I think that will be definitely right up my alley and something I can enjoy. So I haven't given up, don't worry. <laughs> so the next book I read was a buddy read with Dylan from Dynamic Dylan. And it is Wicked and the Wallflower by Sarah McLean. And I'll show the step back. So pretty. Um, but yeah, so I this was my first try at a Sarah McLean and I loved it. It was so good. The writing in this book is so modern for a historical romance. Like, um, I've read, you know, recently I've read some Lisa Kleypas and some Julia Quinn's. And while I really enjoy those authors, this was such a breath of fresh air for me. I really enjoyed the other aspects along with the romance in this book. Like there, it follows a um, businessman who um, kind of grew up in the slums of England in London. And so it follows his business as well, which I thought was fascinating because I am a, um, a CPA. So I was like super curious about all of that. And then um, along with that, there's a very strong family dynamic with uh, Devil, who is the main hero in this, and his brothers, who are all bastards of this duke. And so... Um, just following that was super fascinating to me. Uh, I really wanna pick up the next book in this series, Brazen and the Beast or something, I think is what it's called. Um, it follows the other brother that does, does the business along with Devil. And uh, everyone says that that one, well, everyone I've talked to has said that that one is their favorite. So yeah, that's my plan. This one I gave four stars, I think. Yeah, four stars. <laughs> okay, so the last book I ended up finishing in November and I finished it the last day of November. <laughs> I just needed to get it done because <laughs> I seriously have been reading it for a whole month. It's about a 16 hour long audiobook, uh, and that is, and they called it Camelot by Stephanie Marie Thornton. So uh, my mother-in-law actually recommended this book to me she wanted me to read it for Thanksgiving. She wanted everyone in the family, like the, the ladies in the family to read it so we could talk about it. And I think I was the only one that ended up reading it, but <laughs> um, yeah, so this follows a, it's a fictional account of Jacqueline Kennedy's life. And um, so 75% of it is 
her with JFK and having kids and having, you know, trouble with having kids. She has tons, she has like three or four miscarriages. It's, it's really sad. And then, um, she, uh, you know, dealing with the emotional turmoil of a very, um, in a lot of infidelity happening with, with her husband. And then, um, it, so then 75% in is when the assassination happens. And then the last 25% follows her um, having somewhat of a love affair with Bobby Kennedy, but the author intentionally leaves it up to the reader for interpretation as to whether it was an actual affair or not. And then also her uh, marriage to Aristotle Onassis, uh, who is this very, very wealthy um, Greek uh, businessman who ends up marrying her and um that part was really sad to read about honestly because uh he's not who he he kind of seems to be when he was like courting her you know and so um it's just her life and it was really fascinating i didn't know half of the things that um were talked about in this book obviously i think um she's an incredible woman and um very very well educated and could stand up to any of the politicians that came you know through the white house and uh you know just someone that wasn't just a decoration even though i think sometimes people believe that that's what maybe that's kind of how she was but she wasn't for sure and so yeah i really enjoyed it i ended up giving it a three and a half the reason i gave it a three and a half is it was I felt too long like it it was kind of dragged out and um there were so many random little details that the author tried to include to like show that she did her research and I was just like yeah I don't really care you know what year the boat was and like why it was named this way or you know what I mean like it was just super superfluous details so yeah I ended up giving it a three and a half, but if you guys are interested in learning more about Jackie Kennedy or just that historical time period, I recommend. Um, it. It's kind of like a bridge between a fiction and nonfiction book. And speaking of nonfiction, the last book that I started to read, but because of me reading all these other books, just honestly never got around to finally reading it. I don't know if you guys have books like that where you're like, yes, I'm enjoying it. But there are other books that I want to read more. <laughs> um, and that was My Own Words by Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I was enjoying this book. And I honestly, I know I'm going to pick it up again. I even dog-eared the page that I left off on. But um, yeah, I just I just needed other books to read. I kind of got slumpy after un uh, DNFing Untouchable that I just needed something that was really going to pick me up. And so, and this really kind of wasn't it because it's, very factual nonfiction speeches you know all of that so um yeah I, i'm not sure when i'm gonna pick this up again i'm not dnfing it it's just a set aside for now book so yeah um that's that's the status of this one so yeah guys that was my november um i had a really good reading month when i can find a new favorite i always count that as a win seriously it doesn't happen too often so yeah i i really enjoyed my reading month and um i will uh be posting a vlog um next monday and i hope you guys enjoy it um yeah and i'm so excited that i have my shelves up and that i can finally film in front of books behind me <laughs> With that being said, please like and comment. I reply to every single comment and I would love to chat with you about these books or about the books you read in November. And please subscribe if you want to see more from me and I will talk to you guys in another video. Bye!